Yes. My goal is to get to ten. Six. You should expect more. Well, here's what happens. Yeah, there's not that many classes left. I know. I know. I know. Um, free quiz. Free quiz. <laughs> Got a reputation here. Take home quizzes. That actually might happen. <laughs> I was thinking about that today. I'm like, damn, how am I going to get to 10? Well, here's the problem. Um, so um, it, it's sort of one of these things that's a problem, but probably also good news for you. Um, and that is that due to circumstances that were totally beyond my control, I have to cancel class on Wednesday. And I was going to give you a quiz on Wednesday. Um, so it's good in that you don't have a quiz. It's bad in that I have one less class to give you a quiz in. Um, so we're going to get to 10 before this is all over. Um, but uh, that's where we're at. I may email you a quiz over Thanksgiving. I don't know. Um, but what was <laughs> it's messed up. <laughs> Pretty messed up. No, I don't think it's the most messed up thing I've ever done. I wouldn't send it on Thursday. I'm a classy guy. I would wait till Friday. <laughs> um, you know. But uh, yeah, uh, we'll get there. So um, so yeah. So unfortunately, so don't come on Wednesday. I won't be here, and um, I'm I'm not scrambling a sub for uh, for Wednesday. For Wednesday, the good news is we're um, we're actually well ahead of kind of what I was hoping to do. Um, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with like where we are in terms of progress. We've got uh, when we come back, we'll have five more lectures, and that's it, right? Five lectures plus today makes six. Uh, the missed one would have been seven, but we'll just live without the missed one. It's okay. Um, I'm also encouraged by the fact that things are going pretty well in lab. I understand that's going well. So um, you know, I hope kind of everybody digs in and enjoys their final project. Um, Elliot was saying that a couple of you had approached him, like, could we tweak the project? Can we do this extra? Can we do that extra? The answer to all those questions is yes. Um, like, anything you want to do creatively, above and beyond, go nuts. Like, that's, we're just setting the baseline, right? If you, if you get motivated and, like, this is your thing, do it, all right? There's another one. Okay. Um, so, uh, how did things go on Friday? Did you talk about mutual inductance? Yeah. Did that make sense? You know, it is what it is. Uh, mutual inductance is basically if you put two inductors near each other, they'll cause each other to induct. Uh, believe it or not, you can do almost the same thing with capacitors, actually. Um, this happens a lot in... Um, we see this a lot, especially in um, either printed circuit boards or... Um, in, believe it or not, in um, integrated circuits, when you make computer chips, um, you actually have to worry about how closely you run certain traces to each other on the metal because they can actually cause, like, one, signals changing in one trace can cause inductance or capacitances in, in, a, in another one. So, like, for example, on a, on a typical, you guys haven't taken, um, this is, no, you wouldn't have taken it. Like, when you actually learn how to make chips, like actual silicon hardware, it's pretty cool, right? I mean, basically what you do is you have these transistors that you lay out, and then you connect them with, um, with these metal traces. So you might say, and you physically, like, there's a, there's a CAD tool where you actually draw them, right? So you say, I'm going to have a metal layer, so you draw yourself a wire. I'm going to have a metal layer. And then I'm going to have a metal layer that goes here next door to it, okay? And you can sort of set the width and the spacing and so on. Yeah. Well, you can put them close together, but, but I mean, here's the thing. There's a, especially if you're designing, like, high-end electronics where things are, you know, uh, clock speeds are really, really high. I mean, these things really matter, okay? Especially, like, then you can have cross layers that go on top. Um, so you can have, like, connections between the layers um, so that, like, this metal will contact this one but not that one. Um, but the thing that's really interesting is that if you put these pieces of metal close to each other, they can either cause mutual inductance or mutual capacitance, kind of depending on the nature of the signal and like the physics of the metal. So what's cool about the CAD tools is they can actually simulate this. So when you go to simulate it, um, the CAD tools that you use to design this will actually say, hey, like you've gotten these two bits of metal 
a little too close to each other, okay? And it can actually look at the physics of the layout and say, I know you don't think there's a capacitor between them, but there's actually a capacitor between them, all right? Or it can basically say, like, I know you don't think there's a mutual inductance between these, but there's actually, like, a little bit of mutual inductance between them, and it can model that. And you go and you run your simulation, you're like, wow, like, this performance is nowhere close to, you know, the performance of the op amp that I was designing on paper. And you're like, yeah, well, these two wires are close to each other, and you've invented an inductor that wasn't there before. Anyway, these things matter, and um, at the very least, you should know how to calculate them, and that's sort of what the point was of, of Friday's lecture. So, uh, this stuff is cool. It's um, designing computer chips is like half science, half art. Um, it's all frustration, though. It's it's um, it's if you're detail oriented, you know, and you like dotting your I's and crossing your T's. This is a field for you. Um, I think it's actually pretty lucrative too. Like, not a lot of people can actually do this all that well. Um, it's one of those things where, like, you can read a textbook to know how to do it and still design an awful chip. Um, I know because that's how I learned how to do it. I started in grad school, and um, my advisor was like, we need to make a chip. I don't know how to do that. And he handed me a textbook, and I read it, and we designed an awful chip. Um, then you start to realize, like, oh, you can't do this, right? There's, well, we invented a capacitor that wasn't there, and you start to learn. So anyway, um, are there questions about mutual inductance? It is what it is. It's in the book. Uh, read up on it. If you have questions, uh, hit me up after break. Uh, what I want to talk about today is uh, transformers. Not the awesome 80s cartoon, although we could talk about that if you want. Yeah, please, please have, please. Please have, <laughs> on what? Now? No, like, I can give you one now. No, no, I, I am not ready. Okay, I'm not ready to give you a quiz, so you're okay. Okay. Um, no, we, no. Um, so, um, transformer sort of works, it's, it's sort of like the cousin of the mutual inductor. It's, it's kind of uh, related to it, but it works a little bit differently. And it has some pretty cool features. So, essentially, the idea behind a transformer is that, um, you know, you have some sort of voltage source here, which we'll call V1. And um, I'm just going to get my directions right. Uh, you have a current, which we'll call I1. And then uh, what you'll have in the middle is a core, some sort of metallic core. And your wire, uh, not helping matters here, is the fact that I cannot draw at all. Uh, oh, boy. OK. Oh, look at that obeyed. Killing it. OK. So it's. Uh, that would have looked a little more awesome if that top one went under me. Okay, whatever. Um, so you have, a, um, you have a core, and your wire wraps around the core. On the other end, you have another wire. Uh, let's see here. Okay, I think I'm just going to call it a day on that one. Okay. So you have a core, and, the, and the, the wires curl around each core. Uh, let me go ahead and finish labeling this. So we'll call this um, V2. We're going to call this I2, and 1, and 2, and then um, actually, I'm just going to leave it like this for right now. OK. So what the N1 and the N2 is is they dictate how many turns are on either side. Yes? Sorry, I thought they were like wrapped over each other somehow. They can be. I mean, there's different physical configurations. I'm not going to worry too much about it. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's different ways they can be wrapped, from my understanding. I've actually not wrapped one myself. Um, I wonder if that's possible for a lab one day. I'll make a mental note of that. That's a good idea. Um, anyway, um, what you wind up with is. Um, is a situation where basically current flows through this wire. The wire induces uh, a magnetic field in the core. And that, in turn, the process goes backwards, and then you get sort of the, the reverse effect on the other side. So in other words, you have current on this end induces current on this end. And what's fun about this 
is that you can vary the number of coils, the number of wraps, on, uh, on each side of the transformer. Okay? They don't have to be the same. In fact, they're, it would be pointless if they were the same. So you have what's called the turns ratio. Okay? And you would say something like the turns ratio is you know, this many to that many. We'll do a few examples where we see how that works. All right? So the way this works is basically this. There's an equation that governs this, and I'm going to get my minuses and pluses right the first time. Uh, it basically works like this. Uh, you can either say that uh, V1 over V2 equals N1 over N2, or you can say that N1 I1 equals N2 I2. If you're so inclined to understand the physics behind this, the book does a pretty serviceable derivation. You should probably read it. Yes, sir. There's no, there's a resistor there. We're going to take the source, just it's voltage. Whether it's AC or DC or whatever, let's just, let's just focus on the, on the voltage sense itself. We'll, we'll put phasers in in a minute. Um, so... Okay, so you wind up with this relationship. So first of all, let's kind of think about what this means. Um, so let's see. If I have, um, let's say I have a turns ratio of 1 to 2. So let me, um, let's say that N1 is 1 and N2 is 2. So let's say I have twice as many wraps on the right end. Okay. Um, what's going to be, and I, let's say I put one amp in on the left. So what's I2 going to equal? I know this is a little bit dumb exercise, but I think it's worth kind of going through this. Um, because it, oh, we've got to build intuition about which way all this stuff works. So uh, if I put in one amp on the left, what am I going to get on the right, according to my equation here? Half an amp. Okay, so I2 is half an amp. Okay, so it looks like if my ratio, um, if, if my ratio on the right, if I have more turns on the right than on the left, it looks like it divides down my current. Okay, so, if, so having N2 bigger than N1, we should expect that to divide down our current. Okay, now let's see what that does with voltage. Uh, so let's say that I had, um, let's say that uh, V1 was equal to 1 volt. So what am I going to have for V2? It's going to be V1 times N2. It's going to be 2 volts. So it steps up voltage, but it steps down current. All right. What does that do with power? Yeah, it turns out that they're equal, right? I mean, if you look at IV up here, you have one, and IV down here, you have one. So there's this, this concept that in an ideal transformer, you, you know, the power is being, you're getting the same power, it's lossless in terms of power, you're just changing the nature of the power. You're either going from current to voltage, or you know, more current, more voltage, vice versa. All right? Where do we, what's like the classic example of the transformer? Yeah, wall socket, right? You go to plug in your... Uh, your cell phone, your laptop charger, right? But what's that giant brick? The transformer, right? What's it transforming? Well, it's doing that too. Um, but before it does AC to DC, probably the first thing it's going to do is step down the voltage, right? Because the wall, you're getting uh, 120 volts RMS. Okay. 120 volts RMS is a hell of a signal to try to deal with, right? You need like probably 5 volts to come out of your charger. So you don't really need, you know, starting with 120 is probably not the most efficient way to go about things. So probably the first thing you'll do is you'll have a transformer that will step it down, right? So you could step it down from, let's say, 120 volts to 12 volts, right, if you get your turn ratio right. 
Okay, can, you, can we do that? Totally, right? You can design N1 and N2, so you can step it down from 120 volts to 12 volts, for example. Uh, what would that do? If you step down your voltage, what would that do with your current? Step it up. It would give you a heck of a lot more current available to you, which is fine. Um, and then once you have your nice 12 volt signal, you could rectify it. Okay, you could actually like make it into a DC signal um, by you know using um, diodes and resistors and a capacitor or something. Yes. Isn't it it's 60 hertz? Uh, is that RMS? Or it's 60 hertz, 120 volts RMS. So if you step, I don't, how does that? What happens to all that current when you're jacking up above 60? Because these like the laptops not taking. No. Well, the thing with the source, the thing with the power supply is it only delivers as much current as the load requires. Right? So you have to take that into account. Uh, I would think of it as that it, there's more current that's available. But that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to draw all that current unless your load, your load asks for it. Which is probably another way of saying if you took apart your laptop charger, you could probably figure out a way to get a giant amount of current out of it because just because of the way the stepper works. There's a reason it's encased in plastic. You can't get your fingers in there. Okay, um, good. So the next piece of the puzzle I want to talk about is I want to look at this, um, I want to look at the load. Okay, I want to think about what load the source sees. Okay, because this is kind of tricky and it's, it's, it's pretty neat. So um, let's just work this example. Um, so let me erase this and kind of redraw the picture a little bit. So it turns out when we draw a circuit, we don't actually draw like the coils and everything, right? That's just embarrassing. Um, so there is actually a, um, we're basically going to draw, if you draw something like this with the two lines, anybody ever seen that before? That means transformer. Six more lectures. Just got to finish without dying. Okay. You need all the little dots. Okay. Okay. So V1, I1, V2, I2. So here's what I want to figure out. Uh, what resistance does our load see? Does our, does our source see? Right? What resistance does our power supply see? Right? In other words, could I redraw that circuit could I draw an equivalent circuit that looks like this? Our Equivalent. All right, what's R equivalent? So again, think about what happens. There's a source. The source generates some current. That current is reflected. That current goes through the resistor. Yes? The only resistance is in that one side of the coil. Okay, so let's, let's write down what we know and see if we can work our way back here. Okay? Because what's pretty cool is that that resistor is going to change values now. It's not going to, this source is not going to feel that it's driving a resistor of value R. It's going to feel like it's driving a resistor of some other value. And that's what I want to calculate. Okay, so let's, what do we know? Let's, let's write down stuff that we are, um, should we put in values? Would that be uh, more helpful or should we just stick with variables? What, what's, what's sort of like your preference? I will right, we'll do variables, then we'll do one with numbers. All right, so everybody's happy. Okay? I'm a man of the people. Um, all right, tell me an equation that's not a lie. Tell me, tell me something that's true. V equals IR. Okay, for this circuit, how would I write V equals IR? Which V? V2, thank you. Equals I2 R. Good. So far, no lies. Let's have another equation. V1 over V2 equals V1 
sorry, I said V1 over V2 equals N1 over N2. Okay, how can I use that? Can I use that equation? Yeah, well, in a minute we'll do an example with values, but now let's just kind of work it like this. How about I take that equation and solve it for V2 and sub it back into my original equation? Can I do that? That's not too bad. Okay, so if I do that, let's say I'm going to take this equation and sub it in here. So V2 is going to equal V1 N2 over N1. Okay, so V1 times N2 over N1 equals I2 R. Is that good? Well, all I've done is I'm just taking my transformer equation. That's right, because all I did is I took V2. I, saw, I took this equation, which I said was the transformer equation, which I declined to derive for you, but which I invited you to read in the book to see how to derive it, if you care. I solved it for V2. So it was V1, N2 over N1, and I just substituted that in for V2. Okay, am I done? I still got this I2 to deal with. So tell me another equation I can use. Yep. We said that I1, N1 equals I2, N2. Okay. Can I solve for I2 and substitute? Yes, I can. So if I take this equation and sub it in here, I now have V1, N2 over N1, equals, OK, now I've got to do the substitution for I2. So it looks like it'll be I1, N1 over N2, times R. Have I lied yet? No, seriously, I mean, let me get some confirmation. I, I screw these things up periodically. Are we OK? OK, we're OK. Do they cancel? They don't cancel. All right. What I can do is I can bring this one over to this side. Now, that's actually a mathematical. So V1 equals I1 times N1 over N2 squared R. So what voltage, sorry, so what, what resistance does our source think it's pushing? V equals I R. Our source cannot tell whether it's pushing this resist, whether it's driving this resistance through a transformer, or if it's pushing a resistor of that value. Right? From, this, from the source's perspective, it's the same thing. Okay? That's how the transformer works. Let's take a second to let that sink in because it's kind of a key point, okay? The source, all the source knows is he has V volts, he's pushing I, I amps, okay? Yeah. We have the resistance at the V1, and we're not Yeah. I mean, you think of it like the Thevenin resistance, right? That's the, that's the impedance that the circuit feels like it's driving. It's like the Thevenin equivalent resistance. That's probably a good way of thinking about it. That's pretty bananas, huh? So we know that uh, if your turn to ratio is greater than 1, so if N2 is bigger than N1, we know current goes down, voltage goes up, and your resistance, let's see, if N2 is bigger than N1, what happens to your resistance? Looks like it gets smaller. It feels smaller. 
Okay, so let's do actually let's 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 stick some numbers on this and see how it works. Um, maybe do an example from the book. Oh yeah. Okay, so I actually am going to do an example from the book because I think it'll. Well, if I do a simpler one, we can calculate power. We calculate complex power. Do I really want to be that guy? Okay. Um, I do want to be that guy. Okay, let's do this. We'll do two examples. That'll probably that'll be a good budget of time. Okay, so let's do an example just with numbers for a minute. And I'm, the reason I'm going to do it is we're going to we're going to calculate we're going to use it to calculate power. Okay. So let's do. Um, Let's have a 10 ohm resistor. Uh, let's see. A four to let's do a let's do a let's do an ugly one. A five to two turns ratio. Yeah, I went there. And um, a seven volt supply. Nothing's gonna be round. Okay. Calculator ready because we're gonna need. Do some calculating. Okay, so uh, I'd like to know everything. I'd like to know um, I two. I'd like to know V two. I'd like to know I one. Have I given you enough information to solve the problem? Ah, <laughs> let's start with that. Have I given you enough information to solve the problem? Yes. 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 You have everything you need. Okay. What's the easiest? What's the easiest thing to solve for first? V2. How can you solve for V2? To solve for V2, you need I2. Do you have I2? V1 over V2. V1 over V2, but you don't know V2. Well, we need a plan. That's basically what I want to call it is a plan first, right? Yeah. Oh, we can do that. Good. Okay. No, no, you're absolutely right. Okay. So let's start with V2. Okay. So V2, how do I get V2 from V1 and the turns ratio? What did we say it was? We said it was V1 over V2 equals N1 over N2. Right? So v, we said V1 over V2 equals N1 over N2. So therefore, in order to get V2, it should be V1 N2 over N1. Hey, I know all those values, because that's N1, that's N2, that's V1. Okay, so let's see here. That's what? 7 times 2 over... Five, is that right? So we're getting two point eight for V two. Yeah. Nice. All right. So what's my uh, I two going to equal? What's my I two going to equal? Should just be V two over ten ohms. Okay, so if I take my V2, divide it by 10, I get 0.28 amps. And how do I get I1? Right, so it should be I2, N2 over N1. Is that correct? No, I mean, seriously, is that correct? I get these mixed up all the time. Okay, so if that's I2, I'm going to multiply by N2, which is 2, and divide it by N1, which is 5, and I'm getting 0.112 amps. Yeah? 
Nice. Okay. So how can I figure out my equivalent resistance? What's, what's the resistance that my source thinks it's pushing? I can calculate it one of two ways. Right, I can either say V1 over I1. Let's see, so V1 over I1 should be 7 over 0.112. So I'm getting 62.5. And what's the other way I could have calculated my equivalent resistance? N1. Yep, N1 over N2 squared times, times R. Let's see. Let's see if our math works out. So N1 over N2 is 5 halves. So 5 halves squared times 10. Look at that. I like it. I like it. OK. Let's do one more piece of this puzzle. Let's do the power calculation. So first of all, any questions about the example we've just run? Pretty straightforward. OK. How much power is being dissipated in the load? How can I calculate that, the power in the load resistor? Right. I mean, the easiest way would be V2, I2, wouldn't it? V2, the power is always voltage times uh, current. And the load is seeing V2 times I2. OK. So if we do that, V2, which is 2.8, I2, which is 0.28, we get 0.784. Nice. How should that compare with the power coming out of the source? Should be the same, right? All the power that's coming out of the res that's being dissipated by the resistor should be served by the should be served by the source, right? So let's see what's the power from the source. It should be V1 I1. So let's see, V1 is 7, I1 is 0.112. You're not going to believe this. Oh, it's like magic. <laughs> I'm a conjurer of cheap tricks. Sorcerer of cheap Did I get it wrong? <laughs> Lord of the Rings reference. Yes? So ideally, though, you'd, be, you'd lose a little bit of power in the transformer. Of course. Is that in heat or magnetic energy? Yes. Uh, <laughs> good question. Uh, I don't know, actually. It's a good, I, I know it's not light. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe a little bit of both. I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, if, if I forget to look it up, you should look it up and tell me. I mean, that, that'd be kind of interesting. Yes? Right. To make the magnetic field work. Yeah, yes. I, I, I'm just, I'm just sorry, I'm just trying to imagine mathematically like how, how that would play out. Like I'm guessing probably that mathematically it would be indistinguishable from just having a slightly different turns ratio. Like maybe you wound it as 5 to 2, but in, in practice, if there's inefficiencies, it would work like 5 to like 1.8, for example. I'm, 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 I'm just guessing. But yeah, I'm guessing because there's really no, 
resistance. I mean, you're just talking about wires, right? So it's probably like magnetic, like the, the energy required to, to kind of move the magnetic uh, field that's, that's going to, to cause your uh, inefficiencies, your non-idealities. But I can't say for sure. There's always some piece of the puzzle I forget. Okay, should we try an example with phasers? <laughs> okay. These are kind of fun, right? I mean, it's not that much to it, and you practice it a little bit. And... and you learn something useful. All right. So let us see. So I'm going to do example 10.8. Given the circuit shown in figure 1020, we wish to determine all indicated voltages and currents. Holy smokes. Okay, I have my Wheaties for breakfast, so I think I'm ready. That's 120 angle zero. I've got 18. I've got an inductor, no, I've got a capacitor, minus J4, that's a great sound, okay, I've got a 4 to 1 turns ratio, and then I've got a 2 and a 1J. Two, uh, one J, and we've got I two, I one, and uh, we're going to call this V one, and we're going to call this V two. Okay, so our goal is to calculate V one. V2, I1, I2, and then I may go bananas and try to calculate the complex power in this thing, but I haven't done that ahead of time, so I cannot guarantee that it will not end in disaster. Okay? So we're all on the same page with what we're trying to do. Our goal is to calculate V1, V2, I1, and I2. Can somebody suggest even a strategy on how to begin. Combining stuff would be a good way to start. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I think they're in the drop space between the floors, actually. I don't know that they're on the fourth floor. I don't think there's anything going on on the fourth floor, is there? The fourth floor doesn't cover all of the third floor, though. I think we may be in part of the third floor that's... Maybe they're putting something on the roof above where we are. I can't remember. Is this part of the third floor that's... I think we're uncovered here. I think this is, like, the top floor of where we are. I think they're fixing the vending because one of our classes... All I know is I got an emergency phone call last week, last Thursday, and they said, we're coming to your lab to drill a hole in the ceiling. <laughs> Move everything. Move either. Uh, <laughs> Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. <laughs> 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 